what they need to do is to have a PCR test upon arrival and use the Trace Together app on their mobile devices for contact tracing throughout their stay. In fact, China and Victoria and Australia are the latest addition to a list of places that Singapore unilaterally opened its borders to. These places include Brunei, New Zealand and Vietnam. The move is part of a slew of measures to reopen Singapore's borders and revive the Changi Air Hub. It serves as a standing invitation from Singapore to these countries. Now, Singapore's tourism industry has been brought down to its knees by the pandemic. You actually don't need to look far for clues. Just look around me at the Changi Airport. This used to be one of the world's busiest airports. It served 68.3 million visitors in 2019. This year, Changi only saw 3.5 million visitors since Singapore closed its borders to foreign travelers on March 23rd. The tourism industry is an important pillar of the Singapore economy, contributing 4% to its GDP. The Singapore Tourism Board has since launched a domestic tourism campaign, encouraging locals to rediscover their own country. Hotels are promoting heavily on staycations and daycations. Cruise ships plan to sail to nowhere. Just last week, I was here covering the A380 restaurant initiative by Singapore Airlines as it turned two of its super jumbo jets into fine dining restaurants, welcoming paying customers. Although these initiatives did receive positive response, industry experts say the small size of the local market will not be sufficient by a long shot to revive an industry on its knees.